Hey, what's up, Zach here. And today I've got the all new Way of Wade All City 11. Here we go. Now looking at the uppers of the All City 11, they definitely have some more premium upgrades to them. I'm not sure if this is synthetic or real leather in the tongue, as well as in the lace line, but it is very substantial. The lockdown you get is really nice. The tongue feels really nice on foot. And it's not necessarily the materials on the outside, but on the inside of this tongue, it has this more like terry cloth type material on there, which feels really nice on foot. So even though the tongue isn't the thickest out there, it definitely has a nice feeling on foot. And if you look at them on the microscope, that's kind of where the real ingenuity of this shoe comes into play. If you look, it's this flowering TPU knit on the top of the shoe, but it's in these kind of floret patterns. So you have weaves going in all different directions and interconnecting to these little kind of flowering pods all throughout the uppers, which makes it really, really super strong. And as you move into the mid part of the shoe, that's where you get into more of the traditional textile braided uppers, which gives you more kind of that macro support in the midfoot to keep the shoe kind of from buckling going side to side. Then coupled with that heel to toe TPU stabilizer on the outside, which is actually reinforced forced with the outsole tread as well. And these just become just one of the most stable shoes out there. They feel low to the ground, even with, you know, a decent stack of foam in them, but they feel low to the ground and they feel like they are not going to give side to side because your foot is almost sitting under this giant chassis of a shoe. The other thing I love about some of the Wade shoes, they give braided laces, which just lock down really well. The one problem is, is that sometimes they do have a problem with kind of getting them tight. So a lot of times you got to pull the individual strands because these braids want to stay in the holes, especially in this little leather area there, they do definitely want to kind of lock into there. So just make sure that, you know, you kind of get every little strand locked in, but once you do, the lockdown is incredible. But by far the most impressive part of the All City 11 uppers is their breathability for how much you get in them. On the breathability test, only got 137.1 degrees of warming, but a very impressive 78.8 degrees of cooling. And when I had my hand on top of them, you can just feel the heat coming out, especially the forefoot. This material material just exchanges heat so well. And so even for a little bit more of a maximalist shoe upper, they still do get rid of heat very well. And on the upper durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds, highest grit sandpaper. I mean, the Dremel does not get through the TPU layer. It does get through this silver tab. However, the outsole tread rides so high on these. I would say even for pretty aggressive draggers, these aren't gonna wear down anytime soon. And like I said, on indoor court, because this TPU, the coefficient of friction is so low, you're just gonna glide right around it. So I'd say on a really, really gritty outdoor court, if you're really extreme toe dragging, I still think the outsole tread is gonna keep you covered, but if not, it should still last you a decent amount of time. But getting into the midsole teardown of the All City 11, one of my favorite things ever in a shoe is a double shank. One top loaded, one bottom loaded. Gives the shoe so much stability underfoot, but also a little bit more snap to them. Plus a full bed of boom foam, which is right now probably my favorite midsole foam. That and Under Armour Flow Foam. Just that really super elastic plastic substitute foam, which is also very resilient. However, you add two shanks onto that, the shoe becomes super, super stable as well as pretty durable in the midsole as well. Now, if you look at the jump height test on these 19.5 centimeters, which is pretty decent. I actually thought I would get a little bit better on them. I think though, because the shoe is so flat to the ground and more stable, it is maybe a little bit harder to kind of bend and snap. So I think as the shoe breaks in more and more, that jump height's gonna get better and better and better. And the reason I say that with a lot of confidence is you look at the bounce height test, got 40 and a half centimeters of bounce height in the heel and 47.5 in the forefoot, which is actually flipped from the 808 Ultra V2, which got a lot better in the heel with more stack and then worse in the forefoot. So I'm not sure if this is a different tuning or different tooling of boom foam. Remember, you can dial in Pebex. So this might be a little bit of a different formulation. I'm not sure, but definitely a super encouraging sign for the break-in period of these shoes, where you can get so much bounce out of the forefoot, which is where you'd be jumping for, you know, a jump shot anyway. So I would say the more these break in and they get into that sweet spot, I think you're going to find a really easy shoe to get up off the ground. And getting in the outsole tread, I had a love-hate relationship with this tread. It is a really thick razor pattern here on the periphery of the shoe within a little bit of tighter herringbone on the inside. I mean, razor patterns and herringbone, a little bit interchangeable. Those razor patterns, a little bit wider set, a little bit thicker and chunkier of a pattern. Now, on an outdoor court, this will pretty much grip anything from really slick outdoor courts to really gritty outdoor courts, painted or just blacktop. On an indoor court, I found initial grip on these to be the best shoe I've ever put on. I mean, these things just do not move. However, they do 
do pick up quite a bit of dust on an indoor court. And I found that unless I kept wiping them down, uh, that grip really started to wear down over time. Even after about maybe 10, 15 minutes on court, I could notice the grip going down. And, and after an hour, one time I was on court, I just didn't intentionally didn't wipe them down to see how they would do. And they were pretty forgiving. So I would say bring something to wipe them down and you'll keep getting really outstanding grip. But if you don't, get ready for a little bit of slippage. Once they start picking up that dust, and that's a little bit different than some other way of weight shoes I've tested recently, like the new 808 Ultra V2, which picked up dust too, but just didn't stop gripping because that had that mixture of TPU and rubber in there. This is a really high abrasion resistance rubber. I mean, if you look at the outsole durability test, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, I mean, not even a millimeter of damage, barely a scuff on it. So it is super resistant to wear. You'll have these for a long time, no matter what surface you have them on. Just remember on indoor hardwood, just keep something around to wipe them down. But the one cool thing about the outsole tread is the durometer comes in at 19.75, which is pretty hard. It's not the hardest I've ever seen, but the abrasion resistance is so much better than shoes with kind of the same durometer. So it is interesting that you can make a shoe that has those additives in the rubber that make it resistant to abrasion, but you can also keep them a little bit softer than some more like those super hard rubber tennis shoes that are like in the 22, 23, 24 range in terms of barometer. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the shoe is going to last super long if the rubber is super hard. A lot of times it's the actual makeup of the rubber that makes it more resistant or not to abrasion. And looking at the speed ratio of the All City 11 comes in at 2.88, which is really good for a basketball shoe, really good for any shoe, I guess. Uh, but that double shank does give you a lot of pop off the first step. It's just like I said, make sure that that rubber is acting optimally to get the stopping power. Cause like I said, these shoes get up to speed pretty easily. Just you want that stopping power too, to make those really wicked cuts. And getting into the fit of the All City 11 V2, a narrow, medium and wide foot can just just go true to size on these. If you are really narrow, maybe go down a half size if you want like a super performance fit. That's like on a lot of wave wade shoes and go down a half size if you're narrow foot. Uh, however, in terms of heel pain, ball of foot pain, tendonitis, arch type strain, you know, boom foam plus a double shank, really not much better. Plus these have no heel slipping issues so you can fit an orthotic in them as well. So I'd say for the snake bitten foot, especially for somebody that's more of a sprainer, unstable foot, because like I said, it feels like there's a chassis going all the way around the foot from heel to toe and then all the way back around on the inside. So I'd say in terms of snake bites, if you're looking for a shoe to kind of help you out, this is a great pickup. And in terms of playability, the All City 11, a lot like the All City 10, they're an ultra stable shoe. So they're a more like confidence type shoe. They're, they more allow you to do more because you don't feel like you're going to sprain or roll over on them. I found with really hard stops, kind of shuffle stepping or hezzy stepping, I really did not feel like I was gonna roll over in these. I was going under the hoop, trying to lift off on one foot, which is how I sprained and broke my ankle the one time. I, I just had no issues with it whatsoever. You just really feel like you have a stable base underneath of you. I don't feel like there's one position in these that is better than the other. I feel like they play all positions pretty well. I would say though, if you're a center and looking for a really resilient shoe in the paint, especially just going up for rebounds all the time or trying to get up and down, up and down and want a shoe that, that's gonna hold up over time, a double shank plus Pebex based foam, there's really not much better out there. So I'd say if I had to pick one position, it would be center, maybe power forward. Uh, but these play every position very well, kind of not really dependent on body size or shape. Um, it, this is kind of an all around shoe. And just kind of like the All City 10, when I was doing reviews on that back when this backdrop didn't look like this. Uh, I kind of said a lot of this, the same things on the 10. They just give you that stable base to do a lot of different things and you kind of bring the creativity to the table and these will bring the stability. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on the All City 11, especially because they are such a good hybrid shoe for indoor and outdoor. You know, do you care if you got to wipe them down on the hardwood courts? I'd love to know. I mean, I see a lot of people doing that anyway, so I mean, it's not a big deal for me, but I'd love to know if it is for you. And if you want to see their sibling to the Way of Wade, All City 11, the Way of Wade 808, two ultra v2 i think i said that in the right direction or the right sequence make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below respect rubber and foam and of course double shanks see you in the next one